Good afternoon, folks. Right, Himalayan modifications. Yeah, well, it's not exactly a modification today. It's a few bits and pieces I've done to the bike. And yes, I am filming with my crash helmet on. So uh, do, do do excuse me. Uh, the reason for that is I need both my hands. So uh, right, let's start off with the panniers. Are the panniers any good? The Royal Enfield ones. Well, let's take a look. Well, there they are. That's the Royal Enfield uh, Himalayan panniers. Uh, I'm not sure if they're produced by Givy or not. There are rumours that they are. Some people say they aren't. Uh, do look after your locks. Now, some of you might have noticed straight away, you hawk-eyed guys out there, and girls even, you've put them on backwards easy, with your muppet. What are you doing? The lock latches go at the back. Well, they can do. They go on either way round. I prefer the latches at the front, to be honest. Uh, what is my reason for that? Well, I just prefer the way that goes up that way. Um, and with my small top box, they fit perfectly. Look at that. Spot on. Uh, now, some guys have said that their boxes leak. Okay. Um, I have a theory about the why, that, why they leak. And my theory is that these are being done up too tight. Uh, I shall explain. These little white parts are just lock nuts to stop the big wheels coming off easily. Okay. Let me just take it off. And we'll go over fitment. Uh, fitment 101. Okay, so there's your there's the back of your of your pa of your top of your boxes, your panniers. These feet sit on your bottom rail. Um, I'm not teaching you how to suck eggs, guys. You know how to do this. Um, but for guys that have just bought them and are not quite sure about the fitment, and these fingers have little grooves they can sit in. So when you do the nut up inside, it pulls that in and stops it flopping around and going out of that area so the pannier can fall off. Okay, let's sit them back in there. Wiggle them in, pop them in place. Right, lift lid. Now, I have noticed, I'm not sure if you can see this properly with the camera angle that it is, you line your, your bar up with the, with the groove in there like so. Just spin it up till it bites. And then uh, probably another half a turn. That's all you need. Seriously, you do not need great armfuls to pull that flush in there. So we'll spin that up a bit. Like so. That's it. it. You don't need to give it beans. This is plastic with a brass insert with a thread on it. That's going to pull out of there in no time. Now that's not quite tightly butted up there, but the thing's on there and it's sturdy. Now if you do, watch, the, watch this, you see it's a straight line there. If you do that up, you're going to pull this line out of true. And then when the lid goes to seal, effectively, I don't know, it, it may be allowing in water that way, I'm not sure. Just literally nip it up, just so it's in the keyway. They, you don't need full beans. This will split, I tell you. And pop your, your locking nut on, just to stop any movement of this wheel and the, the, the keyway is falling down and then the thing dropping off. It's not gonna happen. Okay, that sits nicely on there. You even have to press it down. In the top there, there is a rubberized seal it's like a, it's like tongue and groove on your fence panels basically they interlock but this is a soft rubber part up there this is fairly hard rubber there um, another part of good design you wouldn't have the soft bit there because it would get cut and all sorts of things wouldn't it with things being put on it and whatnot so as you close it down that's a good fit that is a very good fit i've had no trouble with water ingress i have been out on the bike in the rain um, 
<clears throat> lots of rain actually and I've had no problem at all with water going in there I keep my locks it's just chain lube I do my chains with it as well it's good stuff this stuff good stuff squirt your locks with it you can I've done a bit of my ignition as well because some people had issues with the uh, with the ignition falling apart no they haven't had it falling apart easy what you're talking about well, one of them the bottom of the switch did play up a bit all right so that's that's pretty much it 101 for the like I say you can have the latch take that one off and put it there so the latch is at the back it's your own choice I prefer it at the front again these are just nipped up nicely there's no real pinching of it there's a couple of mil gap there you know but I'm not putting this box out of shape by doing it right up you put in too much stress on that cog there this incidentally isn't solid There's a recess in there for the nuts, the head of these bolts. So as weak as that's weak as a kitten, really, isn't it? It's just a location device. That's all. Just nip it up. It's all you need. Right. That's that done. Understood. Again, nice, nice and straight. Yes, I am recording with my bike helmet on and my my um, Ghost Drift X camera on the side, simply because I need, need to use these and they're free. Right, a couple of little mods I've done today. I've put the uh, anti-scratch pad on there. It's a good quality one. It's, uh, it's quite grippy actually, so it's just the buckles of my jacket and things. I do not want things scratching that. Uh, what else have I done? The stickers, when you buy these Himalayan boxes incidentally, you get four of these. Okay, I've used three on there, and the other one I've literally cut up and put either side of the swinging arm. You know, you're coming up to a junction at night, and cars are coming left and right, or vehicles. The more they can see you, I've put a strip there. I've literally cut every single millimetre I've used and put it at different angles on the bike. I don't think it spoils it. To be honest, I've taken a few photos and you can see how it's highlighted. Right, and the most important addition. <laughs> Some of you know what that is. Some of you don't. It's a deer whistle. It, uh, as the air passes through it, it lets off a, a high-pitched sound that we can't actually hear. It's a bit like a dog whistle, I suppose, for deers. Where I live in the countryside. It's a common occurrence to have a deer jumping, especially at night, especially at night, across the roads. And it's not just one, there's a herd of them, usually uh, six or seven, and they're quite big beasties. And they can damage you and your bike quite sufficiently. So, for the sake of three quid, I thought I'd grab a pair of those. I need to stick one on the car, actually. I don't know how effective it is, I don't know what the noise makes it when I go down the road, if it does. So, yeah, that's the... Uh, <laughs> A little bit of a talking point, isn't it? Okay, and I've added a few little uh, smiley bits, really. Just a, just a bit of a laugh, you know. Uh, like, for instance, I've changed my... I've put a little sticker on there, GPS, from my compass. It's just a bit of a giggle. Uh, what else have I done? Fog lights on there. Uh, DC outlet and auxiliary on there. And you can see them all right, I don't know. And for, for if I ever forget... Turn signals and horn. <laughs> it's a bit of a giggle, isn't it? It's a bit of a laugh. Right, so there you go. That is my Himalayan box stop. I've got some Lomo bags to go on. Uh, and I've also got the correct spotlights now to go on there. So I might change those uh, as summer's approaching because of touring. Going to be doing quite a bit of touring this year. So I'm going to get rid of those big wide ones. These big wide spots and put the little round ones on so it won't hinder the, the Lomo bags when they go on the side there. Right, I also have a green five litre jerry can. I'm thinking of making a cradle for, uh, I, I can't put my hands on it straight away because it's buried in the, in the workshop. So, right, well, thanks for looking. Um, I hope you like my little additional stickery bits and uh, I hope I've sort of shed a bit of light on, on the quality of those uh, and uh, panniers uh, they are easy to install i think the quality is fantastic for the price 
I've never had trouble with water ingress, it's, it's been fine. Um, I do just think guys need to just wind them back a little bit, those top, those wheels, because they will break and they will pull the box out of square. Hence, you may have water ingress because of that. I don't know. I'm just plucking at straws. All right, guys, take it easy. Until next time, see you soon.